Hi, I'm Manuela Marchegiani from Eisenberg Skin Care, and today we're going to talk about my 20 most frequently asked beauty questions, and I hope you enjoy my answers. A skincare routine is important because routines are important. First of all, a routine is something that you, it's part of your structure of your day. And having a structured day, having a plan, having a structure is very important. I mean, a lot of research is done on mental health and just success. And both of them always point to the value of a routine and structure. Now, when you get more specific into a skincare routine, it's really important because this is something that you're going to go to a couple of times a day, morning, nighttime, where you're going to engage in cleansing your skin, feeding your skin, protecting your skin. It's going to go into the whole element of self-touch, increase your microcirculation, it's part of hygiene, it's also part of conditioning. So there's so many benefits to a skincare routine and it's beyond just the beauty or let's say aesthetic part. It's, it's really a, a wholesome thing to do and a really smart thing to do throughout your life. Over cleansing is a problem because what happens is, you know, if, if you clean your skin to the point where your skin is, and there used to be a whole campaign about this where you, you wanted your skin to be squeaky clean, right? So here's the thing. You want to be able to clean your skin so you want to get rid of dirt, bad bacteria, you know, makeup, pollution you know, tiny particles, sebum, sweat, fragrance, any of this kind of build up on your skin. Also to help shed your skin, right? You want to clean your skin and keep it moving. But if you over cleanse your skin, what you're actually doing is you're weakening your skin barrier. So your skin has an environment. It has a pH and it wants to be slightly acidic. And it also has a microbiome and this world that is on your skin, is a world of good and bad bacteria. It's a world of ceramides and essential lipids and essential fats. And if you over cleanse your skin, what you're doing is you're destroying that world, that environment. And that means your skin becomes weaker, more sensitive and drier. So one of the rules is clean your skin twice a day. Don't over cleanse your skin. And if you are sensitive, maybe do it once a day and wait, you know, 12, 24 or 36 hours in between heavy duty cleansing so that your skin could build back its microbiome and rebalance its pH. You should use a special product around the eyes because the skin around the eye area is different. First of all, the skin is very thin. The eye area is a very busy area. We look, blink, and move this eye area on average about five to 10,000 times a day, depending on someone's activity. But this has a lot of mechanical movement. This area also is sensitive because the eye is open. So you want to use formulations that are not going to irritate, sting, or burn the eye. Also around the eye area, very little to no oil glands or oil ducts. So what does that mean? When you're using a heavy, rich product that's usually meant for the body or for different parts of the face, if you're using it around the eyes, we've noticed, and there's been a lot of clinical work done on this, that the heavier product tends to promote milia, which is the little bumps underneath the eye, and also heavy product or very oily product also can plug tear ducts around the eyes, which cause puffiness. Um, and the puffiness leads into crepiness and sensitivity. So it's very important to use a properly formulated product around the eyes and to be careful with application of other skincare around the eye area. It is very possible to over exfoliate the skin. And this is uh, similar to the idea of when you're exfoliating your skin and you're taking off those initial layers or the first layers of the skin. If you are over exfoliating, what that means is you're disturbing the pH of your skin, which means your skin is drier. 
it's much more sensitive, its microbiome is not balanced, and therefore the skin can also be prone to a lot of irritation. What women should do um, in their skin care routine as they age is really start paying attention to their skin and start noticing the changes. What you start noticing is, I, I mean, for example, like myself, I went from very oily, problematic skin to skin that never really dried out, but started to have superficial dehydration. Then I started to notice that there's some vascularity and then some loss of elasticity. So what is good to always remember throughout the stages of when we're aging is to use your retinoids, use something that is going to invigorate and really promote the skin. We've been looking at um, a lot of retinol, different kinds of products, exosomes, we've been looking at different kinds of growth factors. All of this is kind of designed to boost the collagen, boost its density as well, because you want that firming and thickening of the skin. So when you're aging, you've got to think about things like the retinoids. You have to also think about not only building the skin, you also have to really, really, really concentrate on protection, which is your antioxidants and your UV protection as well. And I think just having a healthier lifestyle will also help with your, with your skin because your metabolism will change, your food sensitivities change, your sleeping habits change, and all of this shows up in your skin. So when you're thinking about all of these elements together, that becomes, you know, much more, uh, how do you say this? It becomes much more relevant or much more um, important as we're aging because we don't recover as quickly. <laughs> Things take longer to go back to normal and, um, you know, we just start having that wear and tear on the skin. Do you really need to wash your face in the morning? I get this question a lot. And okay, so here's, here's the deal. A lot of people believe that, okay, I've cleansed my skin at night. I put my skincare on at night and I go to bed. And so when I wake up in the morning, I don't have dirty skin. Technically, yes and no. And hear me out. When you go to bed with your product on and you're putting your face on your pillow, when was the last time you washed your pillow? When was the last time you changed your bed sheets? A lot of times people aren't regularly changing them or changing their pillowcases. So that there's a lot of sweat, bacteria, shedded skin on that. So when you wake up in the morning, you have potentially uh, a lot more oils and, and dead cells on your skin. So although it's not dirt or dirty, it is something that you want to get off. You want to get that sweat off. You want to get that sebum regulated. You want to also, I believe, jumpstart your microcirculation and your metabolism. So even if it's just splashing water on your face, going into the shower and you know, you're washing your hair, you're washing your body, any of that residual, that is enough in the morning to wash your skin and to get it clean. So do you need to do an in-depth beauty cleansing routine in the morning? Probably not. But can you go totally not cleansing your skin? Probably not either. So I think a good balance is in the shower. Give it a good wipe. Make sure you get some of that sebum and those old cells off. And change your pillowcases regularly. Over the years, I've seen a lot of acne. I've seen a lot of, you know, flare ups that are induced by anxiety or different, different things. It just comes up and there you go. There you have it. Your skin is like behaving badly. And what I've noticed is the most successful results have been utilizing a really good exfoliant like a salicylic acid and an amazing cream with azelaic acid. That has been by far the best way, short and long term, to deal with these unexpected flare ups and a lot of changes on the skin. Okay, the question is, how to get rid of dark circles under the eyes permanently. I, I really don't know how to do it permanently. Um, I would love to know. So I'm, I'm gonna, you know, 
put that out there if somebody knows. But this is this is my remedy for dark circles. First of all, um, you have to really appreciate that the dark circle element is not just something that you can cure with sleep and or skincare. It's gonna take a village, right? So dark circles under the eyes. One of the things that I really believe in is you should be drinking plenty of water or enough water so that you, you're properly well hydrated. And this is gonna help flush out your system. The other is I believe in rebounding exercise. So I believe in jumping on a trampoline or doing something that's gonna promote your lymphatic system. This is because around the eye area, okay, and underneath the eye area in particular, when you see those dark circles, what you're seeing, okay, so remember, the skin around the eye is thin, it's thinner. And because it's thinner, your circulation and your lymph system is sitting right underneath that eye area. When it's not pumping or regularly flushed out, you're looking at an illusion of kind of sluggish blood flow underneath the eye area that's gonna look darker with thin skin. So by increasing that microcircula, by increasing the lymphatic system and the microcirculation, you're pumping out and flushing out that blood, which is very good. So it's gonna have a brighter color, so it's not gonna look so dark. Then skincare wise, what you wanna do is you wanna use skincare that's going to do a couple of things. You want skincare that's going to hydrate, but not cause puffiness or crepiness. And you want to use products like a retinol that is going to promote better collagen, better quality skin, so the skin will be thicker. You want it hydrated to make it also thicker through hydration. So you want better collagen, you want more hydration, and then you want to be able to put something that's going to block um, the, the, any kind of pigmentation. So a good sunblock or UV protect. So the best cure for dark circles, water, jumping on a trampoline, retinoids, hyaluronic acids, and sunscreen. Uh, products that will help tighten your skin are products that are actually going to promote better collagen and elastin. Because the element that is causing your skin to sag, well, here we go. There's a couple of things that are causing your skin to sag. First of all, when you look at your skin as a weave of collagen and elastin, as you get older and the quality of your collagen uh, declines, it kind of loosens up like your blue jeans after a couple of wears, right? They're not as tight. So this is just a fiber that's kind of stretching out. So what helps with the collagen is collagen signaling peptides. That's gonna help stimulate, that the body stimulates more collagen to make it nice and tight. Also retinoids, again, if you go into your retinoids, that's gonna work on building your collagen as well. And that's gonna help promote the tightening. The other element is you have to understand is underneath your skin, you have adipose, you have fat. When that fat starts to decline, right? You start to lose the fat underneath your skin. You'll, you'll see that your skin now has pockets and those pockets will also make your skin look like it's not as tight. It's more sa saggy or hollow or sunken. So you want things that are going to boost that kind of, uh, the skin lipid content. So a lot of those are going to be like the genistine, the isoflavones, those boost the skin lipid content, ceramides boost skin lipid content. Those things in combination will help tighten the skin and also a really good skincare routine that involves light massage because that's gonna help keep things moving. And also, we're gonna go back to the basics here, a sunblock, because the UV protection, even glutathione and antioxidants, very important, because those things are going to help neutralize free radicals that break down the proteins that promote loss of elasticity. So if we can actually rewind all of that or work around that, that's gonna help promote that firming and tightening up of the skin. Isomers products. Everybody should have Isomers products, especially our antioxidants, our sunscreen, and our simple science. Isomers uh, created simple science because we wanted to create something that was 
peer-reviewed, evidence-based skincare simplified in two ways. One is to have the essential uh, boosters that you need for your skin that are proven, that are probably the most universal. And the other was to have microdosing. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to create an environment or the opportunity for people to be very successful with their skincare routine and utilizing science and evidence-based elements. So in the microdose, I love them because you're getting a little bit of the retinoid, the niacinamide, and the azelaic acid, for example, for nighttime. And studies are showing that you don't want to over boost your skin. So the microdosing will give you success, short and long-term results. And over the long haul, you'll be getting better and better success with your skincare because you can have a routine without anything that's too harsh. Daytime, you've got the same kind of idea with the microdose with the salicylic acid and the niacinamide and the azelaic. So you're getting that nice little drip, drip, drip effect. And for those that need a booster, because for example, every once in a while we need like a deeper cleanse or a boot camp or a jump start, we create those the boosting serums to really get the skin up into an ideal level. So simple science is simply the evidence-based science for healthier skin in two dose factors, a microdose and a super boost. I recommend people see a dermatologist once or twice a year. I think you should see a dermatologist even just for a general checkup, not only when something goes wrong. A lot of times things can happen in an early stage that a qualified professional can see even before you start to notice it. So it's good to have a relationship. Like when you go to your doctor, your family doctor once a year for your physical, I think it's a really smart thing to also do the same thing with the dermatologist. Also, if you're noticing something chronic with your skin, chronic dryness or chronic breakout, it's a really good idea that if you're trying something for, you know, one to two months and it's not taking care of it, see your dermatologist. Um, what parts of the body should you be paying attention to besides the face? Well, I think all of it. I don't know which part. <laughs> it's like saying picking your favorite child. Um, you really can't. But truly, I think we tend to, especially in North America, I think the way we look at our skin and our bodies and what we pay attention to is very different in North America than it is in Europe. You know, in Europe, you know, they're all about, you know, the shape and the bust line and the legs. And I think in North America, we're more about the hands and the neck and the decollete. So in essence, I think it's what's important to you. What feature do you like? I think it's important to take care of all your skin because I truly believe one, well, we know for a fact, the skin is the largest organ of the body. And two, everything's connected. So paying attention to your face, then also paying attention to your neck and your decollete, because when people look at you, you know, you want everything to, to have symmetry in the sense of being in the same decade. You know, as you get older, there starts to be a big separation between face and neck and decollete as this area tends to get very exposed. Then with weight gain and weight loss and just different environments, you'll notice that your hands can start looking older, then your knees start to sag, and then you notice that your, you know, your boobs aren't as perky. So I think all of this is what you should be paying attention to. Um, but start with what you find to be important. I think that this way, I think it will also help with your self-esteem. So if you can pay attention to one thing or two things, not everything, but work slowly and work diligently, I think that's the way to do it. Um, I think the best way to treat dark spots is to go with a two-prong approach. So when you're looking at dark spots on your skin, I think of them very much like uh, transition lenses in your, in your glasses. So you'll have like, your skin will be all even toned and then you'll start to get spotting on your skin. So think of it as that melanin has been turned on for a reason, okay? And it doesn't really shut itself off. So you're seeing that dark spot. So what do you wanna do? You wanna go in and you want to 
start a good exfoliation. So you want to get the cells up, the new skin up, that should have a better pigmented melanin. The other is to use a lightening or brightening product that is going to help regulate the melanin. So you don't, so it's going to be able to calm it down. There are like Illumibrite systems out there. There are uh, retinoids out there. There is azelaic acid. Um, it's very, very good. Uh, glutathione is another one that's really good and proven. Arbutin, another ingredient, kojic acid, another ingredient. All of these ingredients are identified as ingredients that address the melanin without causing damage to that melanin, which is very important. The other thing is, so think about it too, that your skin has a memory bond. And even though at nighttime or daytime, for example, you're using skincare that has a regulating effect on the melanin, if you don't interrupt the UV damage, which is causing the melanin to be excited, that memory bond will, will keep reinforcing itself. So you need to interrupt that with a really good sun block. So daytime, block out and try to wipe out the memory of the melanin. And at nighttime, work on regulating and rebuilding. That's the best way to get even skin tone. Do I recommend retinol for people with sensitive skin? I do. I do think that you have to go with a low dose retinol. I would go with something like we formulated in our simple science that's designed specifically for sensitive skin. It's got, it has niacinamide in it. It has the azelaic acid in it and it has a low dose retinol. And so this is going to give you a little bit of the retinoid and Remember what that's doing. That's working on skin strength. It's working on collagen quality. And if your sensitivity is because of over cleansing, over processing your skin, using ingredients that are too harsh, or just having thin vascular skin, all of these can be benefited by low dose retinol. But I do also think if you want an alternative to retinol, there are a few things that you can do. There are vitamin C's, there are antioxidants that you can utilize as well. It all depends on what you want to achieve with your skin. If it's um, reducing the redness, then you want to go with something that's calming and soothing um, and also increase the hydration of your skin with hyaluronate and ceramides to really strengthen your skin barrier. Um, could your skin get too acclimated to certain products or ingredients and become less effective? I think so. I think that a lot of times that if you're using the same technology for a very long period of time, your skin tends to get used to it and act a little bit sluggish. So variety is really good. That's why a lot of times you want to switch up the uh, boost your skincare routine. One very clear indication that your skin does get used to in ingredients is glycolic acid. When you have a cleanser that is a certain percentage of glycolic acid, you'll notice that the first few times you use it, your skin is prickly, it's reacting, you start to get these great benefits, then your skin gets used to it and you actually have to change the concentration to in, in order to get that same kind of cell renewal or activity. So there is evidence that the skin gets used to ingredients. So it's good to have variety in your skincare routine. Even if it's just periodic, like once a week, uh, maybe every three or four days, just changing up your cleansing, boosting it a little bit more with a deeper exfoliation or hydration. <laughs> One beauty treatment I tried and would not again was laser hair removal and I thought I was going to die. It hurt so much and I actually had to use frozen ice packs on my skin because I was in so much pain. Um, for me, the best way to decompress and relax my skin after a day of work is, okay, take all the makeup off, run a nice bath, 
put some, you know, your favorite, you know, music on and get a really good, I, I, I really like to, to get my vitamin C serum because it's ethylated and I like to massage that into my skin as I lie in a bath and then just enjoy it with the warm water and decompress and sometimes just take a really nice face cloth or towel that has a really nice essential oil in it or something very calming and soothing and just put it on my skin and then after i do that i mask put a mask on and i relax a little bit with a little bit of tea i don't know i think that's a really great ritual to decompress The best beauty secret I have learned is that beauty is in you. It's in your eyes, it's in your heart. And I learned that from my Aunt Sylvia, who just said, you know what, just love yourself and embrace yourself and know that every day you're doing your best and you're just beautiful and just, and that's it. Just best beauty secret is believe in yourself, love yourself, and move forward.